Ooh, you're on a beautiful planet with unusual nature. Around you are ordinary people walking on this exotic planet. And now, get this, it's our new home! Humanity decided it was time to leave the Earth, and now we live very far away in another galaxy. But what happened to our home planet? Well, our solar system itself had an expiration date. It's been 7.5 billion years since 2020, and the Sun began to expand, absorbing planet after planet. Mercury, Venus, Earth. But the living conditions on Earth were unsuitable for us long before that. Let's go back there. In 4.5 billion years, our entire Milky Way galaxy will experience an incredible incident. The Andromeda galaxy will hit us at great speed. As a result of the collision, some stars will be thrown into distant space, while others will form new solar systems. But most likely, all life in the new Milkomedia or Milkdromeda galaxy will cease to exist. That's why people decided to pack up their things, get into new generation spacecrafts, and go to distant space in search of a new home. There can be an infinite number of planets in the universe on which humans can theoretically live. One of the main ingredients, the planet must orbit the star in its habitable zone. This means the temperature must allow the water to be liquid. We find similar star systems almost every year and have recently found the nearest one. It's Proxima Centauri. There are at least two planets around this red dwarf on which we can build our new home. But the problem is that this system is as far as 4.2 light years away. So we had to open our garage and choose a vehicle that could take us so far. Saturn V is a rocket that used to take humans to the moon. It could reach the speed 30 times faster than the speed of sound. Today, we have more advanced technologies, like the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. However, its speed is still about the same. It would take such a rocket about 113,000 years to overcome the distance to the closest star. So you walk through the garage further and see the fastest human-made space object ever. The Parker Solar Probe. Its speed is a little less than half a million miles per hour, but it uses the gravity of the sun to accelerate. Let's assume we can build a rocket that can reach this speed. Now we sit behind a star map, do calculations, draw diagrams, and 6,600 years. And now let's look at the photon. These are the tiniest particles that travel at the speed of light. And an obvious thought comes to your mind. How do you build a ship that can travel as fast as a photon? Well, until recently, travel at this speed was considered impossible. Fundamental laws of physics say that no object that has a mass can accelerate this much. Energy is required to accelerate mass. And to reach the speed of light, which is about 186,000 miles per second, we need an infinite amount of energy. But it's still too slow. Raise your eyes and look at the sun. It's so close to us. But the light from it reaches our planet in 8 minutes. About the time it takes to go through the drive through and get your burger. And the journey to the nearest star will take 4.2 years. You can graduate from college during such a period. But we may have found a way to cheat the laws of physics and travel faster than light. Warp drive. It's a technology that manipulates space and time to break the laws of motion. In science fiction, it's a kind of feel that envelops a spacecraft like a bubble or a shell and allows it to significantly exceed the speed of light. And we already have a similar technology, sort of. It's the Alcubierre warp drive. Since it's impossible to move at the speed of light in normal space-time, the ship must move by compressing the space in front of it and expanding it behind it. So not only the ship itself moves, but so does the space-time inside this bubble. In fact, this will allow the spacecraft to move at any speed, even 10 times faster than the speed of light. But to warp space-time, the ship must be simply humongous in size. It will need the quantity of energy comparable to the amount of mass energy of the whole planet of Jupiter. But at recent symposiums, scientists began to say that there is hope. In 2069, NASA plans to launch an interstellar mission to explore inhabitable planets outside our solar system. We do not yet know the details of this mission. It doesn't even have a name yet, but it will be dedicated to the 100th anniversary of the Apollo mission, the first man landing on the moon's surface. 
Here, near Pasadena, California, a small group of scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab are trying their best to make it happen. And their latest calculations have made everyone shout Eureka! It turns out the ring around the ship, which should create the so-called warp field, shouldn't be perfectly round as it was thought before. It's more like donut-shaped. This will greatly simplify the design and construction. And the best part? To test this technology, a spacecraft the size of Voyager 1 probe will suffice. Researchers are now aiming to reach at least 10% of the speed of light and launch the probe to Alpha Centauri. In this case, to overcome the distance of 4.4 light years, the probe will need about 44 years. For comparison, the Voyager 1 mission was launched on September 5, 1977. In 43 years, it's traveled about 14 billion miles and is the most remote human-made object. It's also the loneliest one in the universe. It has long since left the boundaries of our solar system and is moving further into outer space. But rest assured, scientists have a couple more ideas in their secret laboratories. There are rumors now that they know how to reach the speed of light. The Space Association is considering launching small drones powered by lasers. Nuclear force, as well as collisions of matter and antimatter, can give enough energy to accelerate an object to the speed of light, too. But their colleagues in a nearby laboratory are working hard to implement another technology – ion propulsion. It uses gas particles accelerated by the electric field. Simply put, your regular rocket is a daredevil on the road. He pulls the throttle to the max and burns an incredible amount of fuel to accelerate to the speed he needs. But ion propulsion is a careful old lady driving. She slowly presses the gas pedal and accelerates. On the scale of space, the old lady will have more efficiency and will be able to drive much further than the daring young man. Something we'll keep an eye on. Still, an unknown number of years will pass until there's a way to implement warp drive or ion propulsion. We want to make humankind interstellar. But first, we need to keep it alive at least. Now we're actively developing technologies to send the first manned mission to Mars. Colonization of Mars will be the first stage to make our species interstellar. It'll be a kind of rehearsal before colonizing distant planets. We must understand that although the conditions on the exoplanets may be close to Earthly ones, we will still have to terraform them. We must test our technology on Mars to warm it up to the normal Earth temperature. We also need to increase atmospheric pressure so that water could exist in a liquid state and create an ozone layer that will protect us from solar radiation. After that, we'll be able to breathe freely on the surface of Mars without spacesuits. We need to master all these technologies before we can create a real warp drive. Centuries ago, people sailed the oceans and perfected their ships to fully explore our planet. Now, we will be the generation to build new ships and go on long journeys outside the Earth. Warp drive will open up incredible horizons for us. Take a look at our galaxy. There are countless stars. Around each of them may be planets, and on some of them, there may be life. Warp drive will allow us to get in contact with this life and explore our galaxy much faster. And this future is already close. Soon, we'll have the chance to join the pioneers, put on beautiful suits, and travel the expanses of space in search of adventure. The speed of light is the fastest thing in our universe. It travels across space, passing through Mercury and Venus to reach us, and it's slowing down. No need to panic, though. The sun is getting weaker, but we won't see the effects of it for another billion years. In the vacuum of space, the speed of light is around 186,280 miles per second. Any slower than that, and humans would see the changes firsthand. There would be some awesome effects, like colors changing and the brightness of objects fading. We'd also notice some differences in everyday objects, their length and shape. Scientists created a simulation to see what would happen if the speed of light was slower. In a vacuum, the speed of light can't change. But if light passes through different materials and objects, it alters the way we perceive things. Light acts as a wave and a particle, meaning that it's a wavelength. The color and frequency are determined by the distance from crest to crest in the wave. It behaves similar to sound with the Doppler effect. 
Imagine you're standing in the middle of a busy highway and a honking car speeds through. <laughs> wow, that was loud. You can hear that whoosh-like sound of the horn because the moving object produces the sound while you're stationary. The frequency and pitch seem to change, but it's just the sound reaching your ear faster than it would if you and the car were both stationary. Light behaves similarly. The wavelengths change if the speed changes. Moving toward a light source and making the wavelength shorter will shift the color to a blue and violet hue. Moving away from the light source and you'll get something more reddish. So if the speed of light slowed down to walking speed, we'd notice the colors changing when we approach an illuminated object. At the same time, the color would change around us and behind us. If you walk sideways, the colors you're walking toward would become bluer and everything in the distance would become red. This information is useful to astronomers who are studying objects in space. If they're blue shifted, that means the object is moving towards us. And if it's red shifted, then it's going in the opposite direction. In fact, everything in the universe is red shifted, proving that the universe is expanding and getting further away from us. The slower it gets, the brighter it becomes. That's because the photons become more present for us to see. At this rate, we can see invisible light and increased intensity. You won't notice that effect much if you're standing still, but because of the Doppler effect, moving towards an object will have different colors and different light intensities. Another phenomenon we'd experience is time dilation. It's when you move at a similar speed as light and time decreases relative to someone who isn't. Space and time are relative, so if you're sitting at your desk wasting hours away, yeah, sounds familiar, doesn't it? All your movement will go through time and not through space. You're stationary, but you're still technically moving forward in time, slowly aging. The faster you move through space, the slower your movement through time will be. If you move at the same speed as light, then all your movement will be through space and not through time. To notice that, you'd need another person to watch you. You're not in a time machine. You're both on Earth, experiencing the same time flow. To you experiencing this firsthand makes it feel like you're going faster because you're getting a lot more movement in space in a given time. The closer you get to the speed of light, the smaller you become. Well, not really, but it depends on who's watching. If you're the one traveling at such a speed, an object nearby will seem small, just as someone who's watching you travel at the speed of light will think that you're smaller than you actually are. The simulation that the MIT scientists conducted showed that if the speed of light drops, everything will become stretched out like a pancake. If you see mountains in the distance and then run at the speed of light, they will appear further away. Objects will become distorted and it will feel like you're getting to a certain place faster because time has slowed down for you. If you're standing completely still and someone standing on your left-hand side throws a cube-shaped object over to your right-hand side, then naturally, you'll see one side of it unless it flips around. But in this new reality, you'll get to see the front side wrapping around the visible side you're seeing. If you're moving at the same speed as light in an infinite space, everything will be stretched out as you reach infinite speeds. In a world where people can walk at the same speed as light, we'll perceive nothing as normal. We'll have to get used to the way we see objects. Every movement we make will result in drastic shifts of colors. Even turning your head to look at something will feel weird. Let's say you're in a supermarket buying groceries and you walk from aisle to aisle. The milk at the end of the counter will look like it's really close to you. But when you approach it, you'll start to feel like it's getting further away from you. The milk will also look a bit red. As soon as you get closer to it, it will shift to blue. If someone is passing through with a shopping cart, you'll see it as a sort of 3D model of a shopping cart. The color will shift as it gets further away from you. It will appear far away, but it's right in front of you. In fact, we don't really know the actual speed of light. Physicists gave it roughly 186,280 miles per second, but that constant is just for them to calculate other scientific stuff so we can understand it better. The problem is that we can only measure light with light beams and mirrors. 
But it's not like all we have to do is point a light beam at a mirror and measure its original path and its reflected path. Einstein's theory of relativity states that the original path of light moving from the source to the mirror may not be the same speed as the reflected light from the mirror back to the source. Hypothetically, if it takes light 10 seconds to travel from the source to the mirror and then back to the source, then we can conclude that each trip takes 5 seconds. But Einstein's theory is that it could take 9 seconds for light to travel from the source to the mirror and only 1 second from the mirror back to the source. Or vice versa. Or maybe completely different numbers altogether. That's why it's so difficult to measure light. A breakthrough came out for scientists when they managed to slow down the speed of light to zero without losing its brightness. They did this by using ultra-cold atom clouds made with photonic crystals. These crystals are materials punctured with billions of tiny holes where light can refract. But what if we lived in a world where light stopped halfway? You'd wake up one morning and feel like it's twilight. You'd open the curtains and see that many car lights are on, but aren't so bright. You'd turn on the lights in your room, but feel like the bulb is tapping out. You replace it with another one, but it doesn't do the trick. You turn on the lights everywhere in your house, but it's all just giving weak light. You're confused and try to check if there's a problem with the electricity in your house, but it seems to be working well. You check on your neighbors, and they also have the same problems. Even experts in the field can't understand what's going on. Hours pass, and it's all the same. All the light in the world seems to have frozen halfway. Your phone is low on brightness, even though you bumped it up to maximum. Everything is getting darker. You learn from the news that it's a global problem. Light is slowly diminishing, and soon there won't be any of it in the world. You decide to wait it out while everyone else is panicking. Whoa, something doesn't feel right. Everything seems shaky. It's definitely not an earthquake, and it's actually getting worse. The clouds seem to move quicker than usual, and the animals are going into a frenzy. The news anchor pops up on the TV in an alarmed tone and says, Good morning. We're sorry to interrupt your program. Scientists have just discovered that the Earth's rotation has been fluctuating at an unusual rate. A group of specialists believe that the Earth is increasing its rotation with every second, and they don't know why. Even if the Earth increased its speed by one mile per hour, the day would only get shorter by a minute and a half or so. We wouldn't really feel it, and you could go on like nothing is happening. But as the Earth spins faster, our bodies, which are adjusted to a 24-hour timing, will have a hard time trying to cope with it. If you live by the equator, that means the rotation of the Earth is going quicker than at the North and South Pole. The area by the equator needs more time in order to complete its full rotation from the starting point. You'll experience more rain than usual. The Earth's rotation keeps the weather consistent and balanced so that nothing abnormal happens. But because the Earth is moving so fast, the weather is acting up. We'll start to see more storms and more cozy days inside, sipping on hot cocoa. Even though it seems weird, everyone can go about their day. But if the Earth picked up some speed and moved at 150 feet per second, the day would be reduced to only 22 hours. It kind of makes you feel jet-lagged 24-7. Every business works with the 24 hours a day schedule, so taking away even two hours can have catastrophic effects on the world economy. The whole calendar will have to change and adjust to the new timing. Clock designs will change with the new midnight, replaced with 10 o'clock. And with each week, the hours will shorten, so there will be no proper way of telling time except by sunsets and sunrises. The weather will continue to get worse and worse feeling like the rain will never stop. The animals that rely on weather patterns won't know how to function, and mass migrations will occur from almost all species of animals. Flocks of birds will be flying everywhere and reach places they normally won't go to, affecting the whole food chain and ecology. Woods, jungles, and other places where animals roam are kept in proper balance when unaffected by humans. If it constantly rains in certain areas, then floods will force animals to move to other territories and compete with the predators in the area. If the Earth picked up speed every day, then standing on a scale in the Arctic, 
would tell you you weigh 180 pounds. But around the equator, you might weigh about 179 pounds. That's because of the extra force opposing gravity in that area. With the Earth spinning faster, all airlines around the world stop, since the radar systems have gone haywire and the weather is too dangerous to fly. Everyone has to get around by car. Satellites are positioned in such a way that it's crucial they remain where they are in order to bounce signals to us. Because of what's happening, Wi-Fi and TV signals can't go through. Communications around the world will end up short and slow. And eventually, we'll have a total communication blackout. Ships will cease to operate, and global trading will collapse, adding extra damage to the already failing world economy. Winds will get stronger and faster than usual, which means temperatures will change. Storms, like hurricanes, will be stronger than ever and have more energy for destruction. And still, at 100 miles per hour, the equator will now be swallowed up in the water. The Amazon basin and small islands will now completely submerge in water by around 50 feet. Most of the plant life will be in danger, especially by the equator. With woods threatened by floods, more animal environments will be in jeopardy. The trees and plants won't survive so much flooding. If the Earth rotated so fast that the hours would now be reduced to 15, then we'd probably feel like we're always on a jet plane going through turbulence. It would be impossible to sleep if the Earth kept picking up speed every second of the day. So days would be around 7 hours long as well as nights. The whole world would be flooded, except for the highest points and the tallest mountains. If that happens, humans will most likely end up there clinging to the last remaining clear patches of land. Most of the animal life will be extinct as well. And as the Earth is spinning faster and faster, the crust will lose its durability, allowing more frequent and stronger earthquakes to happen. Volcanoes will erupt all over, even if they're submerged in water. It'll go on like this for quite a while. Many major natural disasters like earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, and even melting ice sheets have sped up the speed of the Earth by milliseconds. So, with the Earth's continuing speed increasing, these natural disasters will make the planet go even faster. Even if it's just for milliseconds, it's enough to have major consequences. The Earth is now spinning at a thousand miles per hour. And as you're sitting with the rest of the survivors, you feel yourself levitating slightly. You'll see tiny pebbles and rocks floating inches from the ground. The clouds above you are passing like shooting stars. The air is thick with moisture, since water is rising to the top, forming thick clouds ready to pour. But since gravity is weaker, some of the rain is suspended in the air. Many small objects will be floating around as if you were in space. The days and nights won't be longer than a few hours. At this point, the whole world will be flooded, and the crust will be 80% gone. If it goes on any longer, there won't be any living things around, probably except for microscopic creatures that can withstand extreme and harsh conditions. The Earth would need to spin at approximately 17,600 miles per hour to cancel out the gravity for things to start floating around. At this point, all the water in the ocean will rise and look like reverse rain. The large mountain rocks will separate from the bedrock and levitate above the ground, looking like little planets in space. The Earth is now spinning 17 times faster than usual, which makes one full rotation around its axis only 84 minutes instead of 24 hours. If you manage to stay that long, then you'll literally see the days and nights go by in an instant. You'll also be floating aimlessly in the sky, bumping into rocks and other surfaces. You won't recognize anything anymore. The Earth's crust is ripping apart, exposing the magma underneath. So landing on the ground isn't an option. You'll see outer space as you go higher and higher. You won't know how fast you're going, but all you know is that you're probably the only human left in this spinning world. The Earth will eventually spin so fast that the rest of the layers will start to peel off, exposing the Earth's interior. It'll start to squeeze itself from the core until it becomes similar to a pancake. Nothing can survive at this point. 
So much heat will be produced from the core that the planet will heat up like a microwave. All the water will disappear, and it'll look like a red dot in the solar system. And once it starts to approach the speed of light, time will freeze. The rocks and floating elements won't move and will eventually be distorted. And with enough effort, the Earth will eventually turn into a black hole. Of course, nothing like this will ever happen. According to scientists, Earth will most likely slow down in rotation. Ever since the Moon came into the picture, the Earth has been slowing down by around 4 miles per hour every 10 million years or so. That's because of the Moon's gravitational pull on our little blue planet. It'll most likely go on that way. So hey, what's your hurry?